Hey, Bobby here with Coder Foundry, and one thing I want to bring your attention today is a new capability in GitHub Copilot. Now, if you've been on the beta for a while or the preview, you may already have this, but a wider audience, including me, received a new update, which is allowing you to chat right inside of Visual Studio Code or Visual Studio. And so this is being more generally rolled out. So I thought I'd take the time to show you kind of how that works. Now, if you don't know what GitHub Copilot is, it's an AI tool from OpenAI that allows you to generate code within your app. Now, if you've been using chat GPT to generate code, you'll know that it does have some workflow problems. So one of those problems is you're cutting and pasting between the web page and your editor. This solves that problem by bringing the chat right inside the editor so that your workflow is improved and it's faster. Um, now, you may be asking yourself, is this free? Well, it's not, unfortunately, but we can look here that it's basically $10 a month or $8 a year if you pay a year in advance, 100 bucks. You also could hit up your boss and maybe he can pay the $19 a month per user and to get it for you. Just tell him to make you faster, make you better, and that you'll like him more and maybe he'll get it for you all right so now i want you to say uh, to be frank with you i don't want you to see this and worry that your your job's gonna be replaced because this is just gonna make coders better and faster i think the way that you can think about this is if you're coding something and you need a little help chat should be there to help you or if it's going to give you some bullet point code that you don't have to type in that's fantastic or you maybe you know what you want but you just don't know the exact syntax that you need um, all of these scenarios is where github copilot really shines so let's check it out here in vs code to see what we can do with it and show you how it works all right so i'm in vs code here and i've got a project already set up and it, there's nothing in here just a, a blank page and some js and cs folders nothing in here at all um, and so if you go over here in VS Code, we can look at the extensions. And for you to get this to work, you need to install GitHub Copilot extension and the GitHub Copilot chat extension. All right. And then obviously you got to sign up and have a paid account or be on a trial. Mine still says preview and pre-release here. So um, it may not be out for everyone, but I have signed up to preview and I just got it um, this morning. So it's been rolled out more as we speak. So if you're not, go sign up for the preview or it may be already in your environment and you just didn't know about it. All right, so um, let's get to work here. So what I want to do, let's imagine a scenario, a common scenario where you have a, a third party API that you don't know a whole, whole lot about, but you need to call it. All right, and uh, let's just imagine that's the movie DP API. Now, normally what we would do is we would go out to their docs and read about the docs and figure out what is the JSON that's going to come back and what properties can I be? How do I authenticate to it? The whole nine yards and it could set you back or we could just ask chat to be now check it out here inside here. I can hit the chat icon and now GitHub Copilot comes up and I can ask it questions. And so what I can do is ask it, Hey, write me a function um, called get movies that calls the movie DB API using fetch. So what happens? And boom, right away, it wrote it right off the bat. And this is actually, the actual URL is, is kind of correct, okay? Now, there's a lot more to this endpoint that you could do, but you can see right away, hey, you know what? I could get started right away. But what if you're doing it for real and you're like, you know, API keys being passed up in a query string, kind of not my flavor. I would rather if it was done with a barrel token. And so let's show you how it could correct code now. So I'm going to say rewrite the get movies using a bearer token for authentication. Let's do it and see what it does. Now you can see it wrote a function called get movies here and it's got my bearer token coming back. Um, and it returns it right here, the fetch, the result of my fetch. And so I could just go ahead and add this right to my, my code here. So I'm going to click on my movie API JS and watch this. This is really slick here. I can click over here and I can say insert a cursor. And now I've copied and pasted from the chat over into here with one click and it was really easy to do. And you can get really, this uh, workflow can get really quick. All right, so I like that a lot, but we're not done yet. So while this does return some movies for us, 
it doesn't actually display them. All right, so maybe we could write a function to display the results from Get Movies. And so I'm going to ask it another question here. And notice that it's keeping in the context here that what we want. Um, and so it wrote it as a separate function here. Okay, that's interesting. Okay. All right, so let's just take it at his word here. And so we'll replace this with the new one here. I'm going to just say insert here. So we've got a brand new function here. And it returns them as an li element with the text movie title. All right. And it's also talking about some kind of movie list element by ID here. But this probably is going to work for me. What if I wanted to display the images with the movie, maybe the title and the description? And so I could ask it another question here. And it keeps up in context here. And so I could say, can you display the results with images, title, and a description? And boom. Okay. Not bad. It's using the LI here and it's got the different elements and then it's pulling in the different properties from um, the API here. Poster path, overview, and title. Pretty slick. Okay. I'm going to say, um, what, if, what if we do this? I like the LI, but what I want really is maybe if I use a div and a card and Maybe I could do something like that. So I'm going to say, instead of an LI, can we use a div tag and CSS to display them like cards? And let's see if it, how it does our function. Okay. All right. So now it's added a movie card here to our function. So let's, let's call this complete here at this point. Get rid of this. And then I'm going to come here and insert display movies in here. So now I've got display movies in here. Um, I've got a movie card, and but I don't have any CSS yet. So um, it's it's prompting me right here to tell me what my next question is being. This is pretty cool. How can I add CSS styles to the movie cards themselves? So I'm just going to click that. And this is where it's making suggestions for me um, to help me out. And this is a very powerful feature that's added in. All right, so it's telling me what to do here. I said, um, I need a style CSS. So I'm gonna copy this at this point, or I can come over here to my style CSS, and theirs is called styles. We'll just call our style, won't really matter, and then we'll insert that right there at the cursor there, okay? So now we have the CSS in here. Pretty cool, but we don't have a front end yet. So what we can do is, let's build out our front end. Um, so I can ask it one more final question here. And what I did is said, hey man, make me an HTML template with Bootstrap 5, call the display movies function, assume external JS files. And that's what it did. Um, it went through there and now we have a template here. So I can insert that right here on my index page here. And so now I have Bootstrap 5 pulled in. I have my movie list here, and this is my ID in a class equals row. And then um, it's script here. Okay, that's not right. So let's let's change it up here. Let's change it. And JS, and we'll call it movie API. Boom. All right. And so now we have a complete solution here. Let's look at it and see if it works. Go back over here and right click, and I'm going to say add to open, open live server. See what happens. Boom. Got some pretty cool um, styles here, but my style didn't come through because I didn't listen to ChatGPT or my copilot here, and I didn't link in my style sheet. So I can go back over here and I can just copy right out of here. So link here and say, hey man, make a link to your style sheet. And I can come here. You know, and I can paste that in here. Or if I didn't want to paste it, look, it's already telling me what to do. See, now right here, it's telling me to add it. So I'm going to hit tab here. And this is part of Copilot where it's making suggestions for you. And it's telling me to add it. And it's the right one because we call it our style. All right. So now when we run our code here, boom, we've got some cards. 
pretty neat. Not the best, but maybe we can work on that. All right. So let's see kind of what we can do here to make it a little bit better. So um, let's go look at our style here. Okay. Let's just, let's just make some changes here. And instead of this, let's make this a little smaller. We'll use rims for this. And here we'll just main this one rim here. A little smaller maybe. Take that off. So maybe that'll be a little bit better. And then um, let's take our height off here. We'll just let Flexbox take care of it. Maybe slow this down a little bit. And then let's run it here and see what we got here. Much better. Okay. So you can see how I used GitHub Copilot to get it to where I wanted and then real quickly with a few modifications I got it to where it's it's looking pretty nice here now we do have some other issues that we could address um, and maybe the, the the image isn't where we want it um, but we can come back in and change it but you can see real quickly this built out a really cool thing and the only thing I can say is like dude Oppenheimer way down here on this list it should be at the top okay it's definitely better than flash and transformers but each to his own Anyway, I hope that helps. Good luck and keep coding.